So we have a situation here where a lot of things have been said since the beginning of this generation, particularly from Phil Spencer um, of Xbox. And we content creators been trying to debate this back and forth with you guys. So you are the most informed. And instead of the truth being exposed, we've had fanboys and so forth telling us you guys are lying. You guys are just hating on Xbox. The Xbox Series S is not holding back gaming. Well, we officially have proof of the contrary said directly from a developer, a pro Xbox developer at that. Let's talk about it. But before we get into all that, it's your boy MM2K of Geeks, MM2K Gaming, and much more. Do us a huge favor, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and rock those bells for notifications, please, so you know when we are dropping these doses. And this is the spill where I give you my individual take on an individual topic that we're going to be talking about during our live show. So yeah, after this, if you are watching this as part of the live show, understand that there will be a very, very, very uh, energetic show that comes right after this. If you're watching this as a VOD, you're going to want to pay attention to the cards at the end because it'll connect you to our live show. Let's get into this one. All right. So before I go any further, I got to show you guys this. This is an article from WCCF Tech where it says Kingdom Come Deliverance 2 scope was impacted by Xbox Series S limitations. will run at 4K 30 frames per second on PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X. It says Kingdom Come Deliverance 2 scope was impacted by this Xbox Series S hardware limitations as developers could only make the game that was 25% bigger than its predecessor. As reported on uh, the Czech website Zing.cz during the ongoing game access event in Brno, Czech Republic, producer Martin Klima confirmed that the Xbox Series S technical limitations, namely the 10 gigabytes of RAM, have impacted Kingdom Come Deliverance 2 scope. As the weakest current generation console has only 25% more RAM, Warhouse Studios decided to make the game only 25% bigger than its predecessor. This isn't the first time that we've heard how Microsoft console impacted the development of multiple games, but uh, multi-platform games, but it is still disappointing. During the event, Kingdom Come Deliverance uh, 2's producer also revealed that the PlayStation 5 and the Xbox Series X, the, that the game will run at 4K resolution and 30 frames per second. Although it wasn't specified if it will be 4K native resolution or upscale. On the, on the Xbox Series S, the game will run at 1440p resolution and at 30 frames per second mode. The lack of multiple display modes suggests that the game will be CPU intensive which is expected to for an open world role-playing game. The Kingdom Come Deliverance 2 running at only 30 frames per second on consoles is disappointing. Performance should be stable at the very least. The game is apparently running steadily at above 30 frames per second. So at this early stage, optimization is definitely ahead of the first entry in the series, which didn't run very smoothly on consoles. On PC, the developer confirmed to WCCF Tech that the NVIDIA DLSS already enables up to 80 frames per second at 4K resolution with very high graphic settings running on AMD uh, 7950X 3D CPU and an RTX 4880 Super GPU. All right. So with that said, that brings in more interesting query because we have this article right here from Phil Spencer where he says, where, where, when he was questioned about the Xbox Series S, he claims that there is no fatal, fatal flaw in the machine. And this interview occurred during the time where um, Baldur's Gate 3 was released and they were talking about how they were going to likely skip the console until they can find a way around what they said in so many words was the Series S's bottleneck. And I remember when great stewards of the journalistic world like uh our our good friend jazz gordon oh no 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 said he's not a journalist but other people <laughs> were jumping all over the case of larian studios because they couldn't do or they couldn't launch um was that split screen co-op and they were like no we're not removing any features to 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 try to 
offset the fact that this is an underpowered machine and it's hampering our development. You're going to get the game as totally packaged wherever we release it. And it finally took Xbox to bend the knee and say, okay, just don't release those feature sets on the Series S. We're not going to force the parity there. Um, you had Xbox's Phil Spencer talk here about how it was their decision and it doesn't make sense for anybody to not release on the Series S, which is the most selling platform. He says here, that was the choice they made. They have valid reasons for this, I think. The majority of people own a Series S, so it makes sense that if you go to Xbox, that it has to work on the Series S. Otherwise, you're not going to be serving the majority of people, so it would be kind of silly to drop that. So you have Xbox's um, own business strategy that make the Series S the most approachable piece of hardware because of price but it is severely underpowered to where it doesn't allow the full vision of a developer to be realized. It can be realized elsewhere. It can be realized on the PlayStation with no problem. It can be realized on PC as long as there's recommended specs and so forth and minimum specs at no problem. Every machine, even the Series X, it, it's fine, right? The problem is the Series S. Now, I want to point you to what a, an Xbox sympathizer says about this. And this is a developer that is an Xbox sympathizer. And their answer to this, right? In their eyes, multi-platform. Now this, uh, okay. This is coming from Cass Caprandale, the CEO of Poppy Works. This is a studio that is currently developing the upcoming 2.5 hack and slash slave zero X. Well, I don't want to say it's um, up and coming because I think this article is a little bit older, but slave zero X, which is being published by Ziggurat interactive on Xbox one, Xbox series X and S PlayStation five, PlayStation four. So by the time this article was launched, th this game could already have been out. We have yeah, January 16th, 2024. Maybe, maybe not, maybe not, but they're, they're, they're being sympathetic to Xbox here in regards to this, right? And they're saying that, look, multi-platform development doesn't have to be difficult. Cappendale explains, adding multi-platform support to a game that wasn't developed with that in mind is where the trouble comes from. This could go some way to help explain some of the issues faced by Baldur's Gate 3, which spent years as a PC exclusive through the title, its early access development. So they're trying to explain what's going on, but I want you to hear this part. They're trying to explain away the bottleneck of the Series S, but pay close attention again to this. If the developers always keep the slowest platform they are targeting in mind, first and foremost, then other platforms should be easier to deal with. So even Cass Caprandale, who was quite positive about their relationship with Xbox and trying to explain away the Xbox Series S bottleneck reinforces that there's an xbox series s bottleneck because in any slew of consoles that you got to develop for you got to keep in mind the slowest platform you say it right there so this totally contradicts all the hoopla and all the shenanigans from people like jazz gordon and destin Legary, those that you know again as it's being revealed that xbox has these enthusiasts that um, that that parade like they're journalists and parade around like they're you know they're impartial, but they just happen to like what Xbox is doing. Um, that seems not to be the case. It seems to be that what's going on is that Xbox might have plants out there, and you guys need to be very careful on the people that you listen to because these people will lead you astray in the favor of xbox it's it's this like it's uh what do we call this um i forgot the term for it but it's it's a term of marketing that's being used right now evangelist marketing it's a term of evangelist marketing that's happening and they're using influencers disguised as partial journalists or or content creators in order to do this it's not it, it's it's not just jazz it's not just destiny it's a slew of them i want to point you guys to something else check this out 
Now, again, I know that people are like, Wait, Dragon is a, is a fanboy and he's an Xbox hater and, and don't pay attention to anything that he posts. But look, if an illiterate man tells you that a stop sign says stop, is that the stop sign's fault? So you guys can get on, y'all can rag on Red Dragon all you want. Think about that. Does that invalidate the stop sign and the fact that it says stop? So you can invalidate Red Dragon all you want. I'm not trying to validate him. I'm just highlighting the 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 air apparent stuff that's being pointed to. He highlights a tweet that comes from somebody that says something that has been apparent to me recently as I've been talking to developers from Toys for Bob and other former AB gay people is that there absolutely are journalists running interference for Microsoft and have regurgitated blatant falsehoods on their behalf. So this is from somebody that that likely is a legit journalist that's been talking to people um, formerly of uh, APK. But I want you to see a follow-up from Jazz Gordon that he posted earlier today. He says, never claimed to be a journalist. I call myself a blogger generally because I was never trained in journalism. Learning as I go, I effed up a lot of things uh, wrong, but not out of malice. It's just general stupidity, and I apologize profusely for it. Can only do better with good faith advice from people who take it upon themselves to give it. I appreciate you. I want to give my family a better future. Otherwise, I'd find a job that wasn't so publicly facing because I'm so unintentionally bad at this and dealing with people. I'm sorry. Now, would these two things be interlocked? No, but I think... It's just amazing that these two things were released, uh, you know what I mean, at the same time. Maybe maybe it's a coincidence that they were, maybe it's not a coincidence, but it just shows you that how much faith you guys are putting into these talking heads who, if you connect the dots or you look at this from 5,000 feet, they have incentive to lie to you and misinform you. Don't be misinformed. Don't be lied to. There's, It's air apparent. There are bottlenecks happening with the Xbox platform, okay? Um, particularly with the Series S. There are serious problems with the platform as far as it allowing uh, game creators and game makers to see the vision that they wanna see. What you guys are gonna have to do is you guys are gonna have to be on top of your business to make sure that you understand what's happening here when developers are telling you one thing but then you got these influencers that are just jumping all over developers we're supposed to support the developers why when the developers are coming out at mass and telling us this console is a problem they told us when it was codenamed lockhart xbox then canceled codenamed lockhart but only because they saw what stadia could do in the cloud and they're like oh hold on our x cloud solution uh, or repla are replacing Lockhart, which was the code name for the Series S. Us replacing that, uh, this with xCloud is not going to work because Stadia is far more capable as far as its performance. We got to bring Lockhart back. And then they, named, they dubbed it the Series S. That's not sufficient enough for us to just go with these fake journalists and these um, influencers that are being persuaded by xbox by whatever means you can't just go by what they're saying you have to go by the truth and listen to the devs you never go wrong by listening to the devs the devs told you that this piece of hardware would be a problem and it's holding back gaming and with all the problems that we're seeing here now with the lack of competition the post-pandemic correction we even got PlayStation running amok and acting silly and giving us crappy showcases because they're not in, they don't feel any pressure. They just show us what they want to show us when they want to show us. And they could be holding back games for the release of the PS5 Pro. Like what? All this craziness that's happening in gaming. We don't need anything else to further hamstring development seeing the best in innovation that it could possibly see. And the more that we fall victim to this, this misinformation, this misinformation campaign, the worse gaming is just generally going to become. You guys have to be wiser. You guys have to be smarter. And understand that when these people, once this information is being dropped, when they start to criticize it, instead of looking at it objectively, but then after the fact, 
want to be apologists like you see here. I'm not trying to hear these crocodile tears. And neither, neither should you. This is from your boy. Let me know what you think about all this in the comment section below. Like I said, if you are watching this live, get ready. Grab your popcorn. We're going to have a heck of a show for you. But if you're watching this as a VOD, you're going to want to check out the card to the left. The card to the left will take you to this podcast that you may have missed that you're definitely not going to want to miss now. So hold on to your seats because we got a heck of a show. NRO Mike Check will take you out. But until you see that, have a wonderful gaming day. Peace.